Um, hi, Priyanka. Thanks for helping me with my project. Anytime. <laughs> um, so, uh, did you know that NASA is planning to send people to the moon in 2024? I do because you told me about it. <laughs> yes. Of the like 95% of people that I interview, that's pretty much their response too. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, so what do you think about that? Waste of money, something interesting? Um, I mean, like, what do you think? It sounds really interesting. What's the purpose, I guess? Is it just to get people more, like what's NASA's like reasoning for it? Is it just to get people more involved in space travel? Is there like in that? I mean, obviously, it would be educational to some extent. Um, but is it like worse for the environment? Like, what kind of fuel are we using? I don't know. It seems like there, I have a lot of questions because I haven't thought about it that much. But yeah, I like What's it. NASA's reasons. Uh, NASA's reasons to go. Um, well, several things. Uh, do you know the last time we went to the moon? The eighties. Would you believe nineteen seventy two? Oh, yeah, I would. That makes sense. And, uh, you know, that time we had six landings, each with two white men. Uh, this time, uh, they're planning to send a woman the very first time. Oh, that's nice. But, like, did, is there anything else that we're going to gather from this that we didn't gather the first six times? I mean, I would think so, right? Well, that's a good point because, uh, you know, Obama, you know, he kind of tried to shift things to go to Mars or this asteroid redirect thing. And he used a comment that resonated with a lot of people. He's like, uh, regarding the moon, been there, done that, right? And so a lot of people have yeah. this impression, you know, he went to the moon, so, so what? Um, well, there's several uh, thoughts on this. Uh, whenever we went to the moon, we only landed in the equatorial regions. Uh, you know, the center part of the moon is easier to get to, yeah. safer, all this good stuff. But what we discovered in around 2010 is that in the poles, <laughs> in the poles... No, no. <laughs> Not related to you. I was going to take a nap, but then you called. And so I was like, yeah, I'm totally free. But like, he's also my like, grown-up nap time. So I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Um, yeah, so we discovered water ice in the poles of the moon. Uh, they're in like these craters that are like really, really cold. And over billions of years, they've accumulated, you know, you know water molecules that have turned into billions of tons of water ice or millions of tons of water ice or something like that. So, and they're not on the equatorial region that I was assuming. Not on equatorial regions, at the poles. And these, oh, okay. because the, the, mo the earth has like a 26 degree tilt relative to the sun, which means that the side that's facing the sun uh, gets like six months of uh, daylight and the side that's facing away gets uh, six months of darkness. But the moon only has a one degree tilt with respect to the sun and it has these deep craters in the poles. And so there's parts that are always in the shadows. And since there's no atmosphere, it's very, very uh, cold there. Wow. So we're thinking some resources. Uh, th another thing is, um, you know, the Earth is constantly being hit by asteroids. Uh, for billions of years, the Earth's been hit by asteroids. But most of these asteroids burn up in atmosphere. Our meteors burn up in atmosphere our land in the ocean, our land on land and get weathered over. But these same meteors have been hitting the moon th during this time. But on the moon, since there's no weather uh, and since there's no atmosphere, uh, th there's like a, a good record of understanding what kind of impacts have been facing Earth, you know, and what, you know, if we understand what the asteroids, or, you know, the meteors are made out of, we'll have a better chance of um, kind of protecting ourselves or understanding. So that that's kind of like one thing. But I have a question. If you were to come back 500 years from now and look at humanity, what do you think you'll find? Mm -hmm. Panic. I don't think this will be the best time, baby. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. I think, like, like, in terms of our knowledge or in terms of just us in general... Um, how about more specifically where we are? Do you think humanity will only be on Earth? Or do you think by that time we've started branching out into other parts of the solar system? Like 500 years from now, I definitely think we would have branched out a little bit. Like 
there's such a push for it even now. But like, I definitely think we would have branched out. Um, have you heard of Jeff Bezos? I have. Isn't that the Amazon guy? It is the Amazon guy. He's really busy right now. What is he doing? Uh, delivering everything to people's homes that they used to go shopping for. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, he also has a space company. What's the name of his space company? I feel like I've heard of it. Blue Origin? Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But probably I, from you. Oh, but, probably, no. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. It's a blessing and a curse, I hope. Uh, you see the blessing part also. <laughs> um, so he talks about Blue Origin and he talks about Amazon. And before this whole COVID-19 thing, he said he actually thought his work at Blue Origin was more impactful on humanity and more important than his Amazon oh. work. Because wow. what he wants to do is basically create like the infrastructure that will allow for more and more entrepreneurs to do things in space with the wow. vision of ultimately moving anything that harms the earth that needs to be done off of the earth, like mining okay. and manufacturing and energy generation. Like for example, if we could mine the moon and set up a manufacturing facility there to make solar panels and then get them into like an orbit around Earth and beam energy down and have continuous... Uh, like like outsourcing the mobs to like other planets, basically. Well, I mean, I think pretty much everybody thinks that all manufacturing is going to be uh, automated and mechanized. It's just a matter of time. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. there are factories in China where they don't even turn on the lights because the machines don't need the light. Hmm. And well, that makes sense. So, you know, if you're already going to make everything automated anyway, it really doesn't matter where you put it. Well, it's true. Well, it's true. Yeah. Okay, a final question. <laughs> Um, so if space travel was safe and affordable and you could go to like, say a week long vacation in orbit, circling the earth, looking down, feeling what it's like to be weightless and free fall, uh, is that something that would interest you? I mean, I feel like if it's available, like you have to do it. I don't know. It just seems like we had one experience once at least, I guess. I think it would be something to do. Do I want to know what Michael said? Did he say the same thing? Oh, yeah. He's definitely uh, ready to go. In fact, that might be where the, yeah. where the, where your special vacation is. Oh, my God. I'm hoping that I don't think we can afford space travel yet. Okay. We're not. We're not there yet. We're not there. <laughs> I think we'll just do the Caribbean. Uh, Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. So we'll figure that out. That's funny, though. Of course he said that. What did my dad say? Uh, I don't remember exactly. I remember not being surprised, so I think likely he said he would go, too. Probably. Did my sister say yes, too? Probably. Yes, I think so. All right. Maybe a family reunion trip. We all go. Like we fun. I mean, Elon yeah, Musk no. is uh, building uh, a rocket that could carry 100 people at a time. Surely we could all fit on that. I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Uh, any last words before I stop the recording? Not last words, but mm -hmm. additional words, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'll be really interesting to see how this evolves, like the space travel and like where we take it. You know, your sister was interviewee number one. You're interviewee number 100. What? Well, That's I mean, pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, I think so. You are at the beginning and end of my 100 days. But I mean, I got 1,700... And uh, 40 more days to go, but that's another. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. This is the start. That's all that matters. That was pretty cool. Cool. Okay, I'll stop.